square extending into the building. So this is Mark Fiorino. Here we are at the uh, Court and Diner in Media, Pennsylvania. We just did an open carry meet and eat. So we wanted to talk a little bit about open carry, especially given what's happened in Texas lately. Uh, we discussed it inside. You want to uh, give us uh, your opinion about uh, how they're doing open carry with uh, rifles in Texas? Well, open carry is uh, generally considered to be the exercise of a right uh, that really should not be alienated or should not be infringed. And the problem that they're running into in Texas is that they don't have the right to open carry their sidearms, their you know self-defense weapons. As a result, they're forced to try and raise awareness using long arms. And I stand behind them 100% as long as there's a little bit of a spin or a little bit of um, you know actual PR taking place afterwards to help to spread the awareness and get the correct information out so that you don't just leave it open for anybody else to go ahead and define it as they please. Okay, so um, I guess it's good to put a little background in. Several uh, chain restaurants have, uh, have not banned open carry. They've uh, they requested the customers not do it. Is that right? Yes, they've essentially... Um, for all intents and purposes, ban would not be an incorrect word. They don't want people to openly carry firearms in their locations, and I believe will be asked to leave if they do so. Uh, like what we did today, you reached out to the to the court diner before we came, right? Yes, the court diner here is very familiar with me. They're very familiar with open carry. They have no problem with it. Um, it we every time the thought comes up to do a Delaware County event, we bring it here. Um, they really like having us around. The thing about doing these kinds of events is that they, you know there's a couple key phases before and after an open carry get together. If you don't reach out to folks and you surprise them when you show up, you're much more likely to have a negative receipt, uh, negative response. Also, after the event is over and you've raised some awareness and opened a few eyebrow, uh, opened a few eyes in the area, it's nice to be able to sit around and tell them this is what we're trying to accomplish. This is why we're doing what we're doing today because we're trying to affect this change and we think it will be better for everybody in the long run. The problem that I have noticed about the Texas group is just that I feel like there's an effective way to do things and a counterproductive way to do things. And having looked at it from the outside and not being someone in Texas seeing the change that's actually happening, it doesn't really seem as though they took enough time to stop and look at that. But recently, having talked to some of the guys from Texas, they have stopped and stepped back and looked at what they were doing to analyze if they were going about it the most effective way possible. Okay. What about reaction from uh, Pennsylvania, especially Pennsylvanians, especially uh, anti-gun groups? Have they said anything or done anything about any of your open carry? The biggest thing that I've had is a couple of looks and a couple of questions of, are you guys cops? Um, around here, you know, in the Philadelphia area, in Pennsylvania, open carry's gotten quite a bit of notoriety over the past few years. So as a result, it's become normalized. That's a part of the concept of open carry, is that if people see folks such as you or I carrying our firearms and being just being folks and not causing a problem, it tends to take the sting out of it. People don't freak out about seeing somebody with a holstered weapon. Good. All right. Anything else to stuff up? No, as is your bit. All right. <laughs> well, Mark, thank you, and it was great having uh, Sunday brunch with you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. All right.